seeing that we have a great high priest that has passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Good evening to you. I'm Father Jonathan Rowe. I'm the parish priest at St. Michael's Anglican Church, the church in Kenmount Terrace. It is Tuesday the 18th of May, and we've gathered online to pray the office of evening prayer. I'm going to light a candle to symbolize the prayers of the scattered church continually ascending into heaven, even if we can't physically gather for worship. You can do the same along with me if you'd like, and when we're ready, the service of evening prayer will begin on page 20. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. The psalm appointed for this evening is Psalm 94, beginning on page 451. O Lord God, to whom vengeance belongeth, thou God, to whom vengeance belongeth, show thyself. Arise, thou judge of the world, and reward the poor, the proud, after their deserving. Lord, how long shall the ungodly, how long shall the ungodly triumph? How long shall all evildoers speak so disdainfully and make such proud boasting? They smite down thy people, O Lord, and trouble thine heritage. They murder the widow and the stranger and put the fatherless to death. And yet they say, Tush, the Lord shall not see, neither shall the God of Jacob regard it. Take heed, ye unwise among the people. O ye fools, when will ye understand? He that planted the ear shall he not hear, or he that made the eye shall he not see. Or he that chasteneth the nations shall he not punish, even he that teacheth man knowledge. The Lord knoweth the thoughts of man, that they are but vain. Blessed is the man whom thou chastenest, O Lord, and teachest him out of thy law, that thou mayest give him rest from days of adversity until a pit be digged up for the ungodly. For the Lord will not cast off his people, neither will he forsake his inheritance. For judgment shall turn again unto righteousness, and all such as are true in heart shall follow it. Who will rise up with me against the wicked, or who will take my part against the evildoers? If the Lord had not helped me, my soul would soon have dwelt in silence. If I say my foot slippeth, thy mercy, O Lord, holdeth me up. In the multitude of the sorrows that I had in my heart, thy comforts have refreshed my soul. Wilt thou have anything to do with the wicked rulers who make mischief by law? They gather them together against the soul of the righteous and condemn the innocent blood. But the Lord hath become my stronghold, and my God the rock of my refuge. He shall recompense them their wickedness, and destroy them in their own malice. Yea, the Lord our God shall destroy them. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The first lesson is written in the book of the prophet Ezekiel, the seventh chapter, beginning at the tenth verse. Behold the day, behold it comes. Your doom has come, injustice has blossomed, pride has budded. Violence has grown up into a rod of wickedness. None of them shall remain, nor their abundance, nor their wealth. Neither shall there be preeminence among them. The time has come, the day draws near. Let not the buyer rejoice, nor the seller mourn, for wrath is upon all their multitude. For the seller shall not return to what he has sold while they live. 
for wrath is upon all their multitude. It shall not turn back. Because of his iniquity, none can maintain his life. They have blown the trumpet and made all ready, but none goes to battle, for my wrath is upon all their multitude. The sword is without pestilence and famine are within. He that is in the field dies by the sword, and him that is in the city famine and pestilence devour. Because the land is full of bloody crimes and the city is full of violence, I will bring the worst of the nations to take possession of their houses. I will put an end to their proud might and their holy places shall be profane. When anguish comes, they will seek peace, but there shall be none. Disaster comes upon disaster, rumor follows rumor. They seek a vision from the prophet, but the law perishes from the priest, and counsel from the elders. The king mourns, the prince is wrapped in despair, and the hands of the people of the land are palsied by terror. According to their way I will do to them, and according to their own judgments I will judge them, and they shall know that I am the Lord. Here endeth the first lesson. The Office of Evening Prayer continues on page 21. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Saviour. For he hath regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath magnified me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him, throughout all generations. He hath showed strength with his arm. He hath scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seat, and hath exalted the humble and meek. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath sent empty away. He, remembering his mercy, hath holpen his servant Israel, as he promised to our forefathers, Abraham and his seed forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The second lesson is written in the Epistle to the Hebrews, the sixth chapter, beginning at the thirteenth verse. For when God made a promise to Abraham, since he had no one greater by whom to swear, he swore by himself, saying, Surely I will bless you and multiply you. And thus Abraham, having patiently endured, obtained the promise. Men indeed swear by greater than themselves, and in all their disputes an oath is final for confirmation. So when God desired to show more convincingly convincingly to the heirs of the promise the unchangeable character of his purpose, he interposed with an oath so that through two unchangeable things in which it is impossible that God should prove false, we who have fled for refuge might have strong encouragement to seize the hope set before us. We have this as a sure and steadfast anchor of the soul, a hope that enters into the inner shrine behind the curtain, where Jesus has gone as a forerunner on our behalf, having become a high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Here endeth the second lesson. The Office of Evening Prayer continues on page 22. Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace, according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, to be a light to lighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, 
and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. And you, thy ministers, with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and evermore mightily defend us. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. O God, the King of glory, who hast exalted thine only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph unto thy kingdom in heaven, we beseech thee, leave us not comfortless, but send to us thine Holy Ghost to comfort us, and exalt us unto the same place whither our Saviour Christ is gone before, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. Amen. O God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works do proceed, give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee, we being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness, through the merits of Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. Lighten our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night, for the love of thy only Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Protect and prosper, O Lord, all those who labor at tasks of danger and difficulty, especially all our frontline and essential workers, that they may be preserved in safety and health, and grant that knowing the dangers which beset them, they may ever take thought one for another, and be sustained by a sure trust in thee. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I invite you to call to mind this evening some way in the last 24 hours that you have been particularly aware of the presence of God. Where have you seen God at work in the world? And just as importantly, what have you seen God doing? Give thanks and praise for that experience and pray for the grace and strength and courage to join in with what God is doing in the world. Almighty God, who hast given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and dost promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come life everlasting. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. Again, thanks for praying with us this evening. I hope these daily services of morning and evening prayer are a blessing to you. And if so, I hope they're also becoming a habit for you, part of your disciplined, ordered daily life of prayer. Remind you that we pray morning prayer on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 7 in the morning, and evening prayer on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays at 4.30. And while those are the times that the videos premiere, you can, of course, tune in on demand at any other time later in the day that's convenient for you. Until we meet again, be good. God bless and take care of each other. Bye-bye.